In recent times, headlines have been dominated by reports of conflicts and geopolitical tensions in various parts of the world. Among these events, one of the most impactful was Iran's recent attack on Israel. This episode not only grabs attention for its seriousness, but also raises profound questions about its meaning and implications, especially for those seeking to understand current events in light of biblical prophecies. In this video, we will explore the importance of understanding Iran's attack on Israel from a biblical perspective. More specifically, we will examine the relationship between this contemporary event and the ancient prophecies of Gog and Magog, found in the book of Ezekiel, chapters 38 and 39. These prophecies have been the subject of study and debate over the centuries, and through them, we will discover profound teachings about the future of humanity and God's plan for the world. So I urge you to subscribe to the channel, leave your like, and let's get into the video. In light of Iran's recent attack on Israel, many scholars and religious leaders have turned their attention to Ezekiel's prophecies about Gog and Magog, seeking to understand if these current events align with biblical predictions. Although the connections are not direct or obvious, there are those who see parallels and similarities between the descriptions of the prophecies and current events. The book of Ezekiel in the Bible presents prophecies related to an invasion to the north of Israel. These events describe apocalyptic events and are considered part of the eschatological prophecies that deal with the last days and the future. In the broader context, the book of Ezekiel was written during the Babylonian exile, when many Israelites were taken captive to Babylon. Ezekiel, a priest and prophet, received visions and messages from God during this period. Chapters 38 and 39 are set within this context of exile, and the prophecies are given to comfort and instruct the people of Israel about their future. In verses 15 to 16 of chapter 38 of Ezekiel, we are presented with the detailed stages of the prophesied invasion, led by Gog. And you shall come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great assembly and a mighty army. And you shall ascend against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. In the latter days it will happen. I will bring you against my land, so that the nations may know me when I am hallowed in you, O Gog, before their eyes. The prophecy describes Gog as an aggressive leader whose intentions are outlined in clear steps. He is driven by evil thoughts, forming a plan to attack an unprotected land inhabited by a peaceful people. The Bible reports that Gog is the leader of the land of Magog, prophesied as the one who will rise against Israel. Some argue that Iran could be identified as one of the nations involved in the coalition led by Gog, given its historical hostility towards Israel. Iran, with its aggressive rhetoric and support for militant groups in the region, poses a constant threat to Israel's security, fueling speculation that it could play a significant role in the final events described in the prophecies. Furthermore, Iran's growing influence in the Middle East and its attempts to expand its sphere of influence can be seen as corresponding to the descriptions of a coalition of nations forming under Gog's leadership. Iran's efforts to extend its military and political presence in neighboring countries, along with its declared desire to confront Israel, depict the images of an alliance of hostile nations uniting against the people of Israel. Thus, the escalation of tensions and conflicts in the region could be interpreted as part of the fulfillment of the prophecies about the final events and the struggle between the forces of good and evil. However, it is important to note that interpretations of Ezekiel's prophecies are complex and subject to different points of view. Not everyone agrees with the idea that current events represent the fulfillment of the prophecies of Gog and Magog, and there are those who see these connections as mere speculation or forced interpretations. On the other hand, in verse 2 of chapter 38, we read another quite interesting fact that increases the coincidences with current events. 
Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal, and prophecy against him. The Bible does not provide a clear geographical location for Magog, leaving room for interpretations and various theories among scholars and theologians. Some scholars propose a geographical identification associating Magog with regions like the Middle East, China, or even Russia. However, the most accepted interpretation suggests that Magog may represent not just one country, but a coalition of nations hostile to Israel. The complexity of this alliance highlights the geopolitical scope of the invasion, suggesting a convergence of hostile interests against Israel. Despite uncertainty about the exact location, the role of Magog in Ezekiel's prophecies is clear. It is a force that joins Gog to attack Israel. This is described as an imminent threat, an alliance of evil, an event in the last days that will be followed by divine intervention. The spiritual significance of Magog goes beyond mere geographical identification. It symbolizes the forces that oppose the divine plan, representing hostility and opposition to God's will for Israel. Gog, as a leader, does not act alone. He commands a well-equipped army mounted on horses and equipped with shields and spears. The detailed description reinforces the idea of a formidable military force. Verses 12 to 14 detail this alliance. In order to take plunder and to seize loot, and to turn your hand against the waste places that are now inhabited, and against the people who are gathered from the nations, who have acquired livestock and goods, who dwell at the center of the earth, Sheba, Dedan, the merchants of Tarshish, and all their young lions will say to you, Have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, to take great plunder? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, Thus says the Lord God, On that day when my people Israel are dwelling securely, will you not know it? These verses depict a situation where Gog and his coalition, represented by Sheba, Dedan, merchants of Tarshish and others, plan an invasion against a people inhabiting an unprotected land. Gog is portrayed as an aggressive leader, seeking to plunder and loot the lands inhabited by this people. At the same time, God instructs the prophet to confront Gog, showing that the people of Israel will be safe during the invasion. This suggests that, despite Gog's plans, God will protect his people. The interpretation of Gog's identity is a point of theological debate. Some scholars associate Gog with historical leaders or specific nations, while others see Gog as a symbolic figure representing enemy forces in different historical periods. The passage suggests that Gog's motivations go beyond the common desire for conquest. There is a connotation of direct opposition to Israel, perhaps fueled by historical hostilities. The invasion described in Ezekiel is characterized as a storm that will cover the land like a cloud. Despite the apparent ruin of Israel, divine intervention is promised to protect the nation. Ezekiel's prophecy has been the subject of intense debate and interpretations over the centuries, especially in the context of the end times. Many scholars and theologians seek to correlate these apocalyptic events with future occurrences, especially during the tribulation. In biblical context, the tribulation is often associated with a seven-year period of intense challenges and divine judgments on the earth. It is described as a time of unprecedented suffering, where humanity will face great tribulations before the return of Christ and the establishment of the kingdom of God on earth. During this period, there will be wars, famines, earthquakes, and persecutions of Christians, culminating in the Battle of Armageddon. Current geopolitical wars, to some extent, reflect this context of turbulence and conflict. In the contemporary scenario, we see a series of crises and conflicts in various parts of the world, fueled by ethnic, religious, political, and economic rivalries. Nations vie for natural resources, regional influence, and global power, resulting in civil wars, insurgencies, terrorism, and international tensions. Although the concept of tribulation is present in various passages, 
It is often associated with future events involving significant challenges for humanity. In the eschatological context, there is a view that suggests Gog's invasion may be intricately linked to the events of the Tribulation, a seven-year period characterized by intense challenges and divine judgments. In this interpretation, some identify Gog as a figure emerging on the world stage, triggering a series of events that culminate in the Tribulation. The role of the Antichrist, a central figure in the events of the Tribulation, is also discussed in relation to Ezekiel's prophecy. Some speculate that the Antichrist may present a solution for the Middle East, establishing a seven-year peace agreement with Israel during the Tribulation. This, in turn, would allow the Jews to rebuild their temple and live in relative safety, creating conditions for a calculated invasion. The possibility of the Antichrist playing a strategic role in driving the events prophesied by Ezekiel adds an additional layer of complexity to the interpretation. The connection between the prophecies of the Old and New Testaments is often explored to understand the complete panorama of the last days. The increase in tensions between nations, armed conflicts, the rise of authoritarian leaders and global economic and environmental challenges have led many to reflect on the possibility of approaching the fulfillment of apocalyptic prophecies. I want to know your opinion in the comments. Are we close to the return of Jesus Christ? Here, it's worth pausing to mention Ezekiel chapter 37, where we are transported to an extraordinary vision that echoes through the ages. Ezekiel finds himself in a valley full of dry bones, a vivid representation of the desolate condition of the people of Israel during their exile in Babylon. This desolate scene symbolizes not only physical devastation, but also spiritual loss and hopelessness that had engulfed the Israelites. The vision of the dry bones portrays the reality of the Babylonian exile, where the Israelites had lost their land, their temple, and in many cases, their faith. The dispersion among the nations and the sense of desolation were palpable. However, amidst this desolation, God appears and then questions Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones live? This question challenges human logic, pointing to the human impossibility of bringing life to the dead. Ezekiel's response to God's question was, Lord God, you know. Then God instructs Ezekiel to prophesy over the dry bones, a symbolic act that foreshadows divine intervention to bring life back to those who seemed utterly lost. Ezekiel's prophetic word is like a call to the spiritual and national resurrection of Israel. The divine response to the prophecy is extraordinary. As Ezekiel prophesies, an impressive miracle occurs. The bones begin to come together, tendons and flesh form upon them, and the valley of dry bones experiences a stunning transformation. Tendons, flesh and skin are restored, but something was still missing, the vital breath, the breath of life. God then instructs Ezekiel to prophesy over the wind, symbolizing the breath of the Holy Spirit that would bring full life to the people. When Ezekiel obeys, the divine breath enters these restored bodies, and they rise up as a vast living army. This vision has a direct connection to the historical situation of the Israelites in Babylon. They were disheartened, unbelieving, and uprooted. The promise of restoration not only anticipates the physical return to the land of Israel, but points to a profound spiritual renewal. Just as the dry bones were revitalized, Israel would experience a national resurrection and a spiritual rebirth. The figure of Gog, the prophesied leader in the land of Magog, and the vision of the valley full of dry bones in Ezekiel are connected by a spiritual thread that runs through the scriptures. Both narratives point to eschatological events, revealing divine sovereignty over Israel's future. While Gog represents an external threat that will rise against God's people in the last days, the vision of the dry bones highlights the promise of restoration and spiritual resurrection. Therefore, just as the bones were restored, Gog will also be defeated. 
The annihilation of Gog and his coalition in the following verses is an epic of divine intervention and manifestation of God's glory. The Bible describes this moment in Ezekiel 38, verses 18 to 23. It shall come to pass in that day that when Gog comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken, surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother and I will bring him to judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him flooding rain, great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus, I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. These verses paint a picture of God's judgment upon those who dared to rise against his chosen people. The prophecy describes a series of cataclysmic events beginning with a great earthquake in the land of Israel. This earthquake is so powerful that it affects not only the land, but even natural elements like the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky. It is an undeniable demonstration of God's absolute dominion over creation. The glory of God is revealed not only in the magnitude of the earthquake, but in the devastating consequences that follow. Mountains crumble, high places collapse, walls fall. God summons the sword against Gog, casting judgment not only on the leader, but on every soldier in his coalition. The divine judgment is comprehensive, involving plague, bloodshed, torrential rain, hailstones, fire and sulfur. Every element of nature becomes an instrument of divine wrath. The purpose behind this divine intervention becomes clear. God proclaims that all this is so that the nations may recognize his holiness and power. He seeks to be sanctified in the eyes of all nations, revealing his majesty and sovereignty. The annihilation of Gog and his coalition serves as a divine testimony, an unmistakable declaration that the Lord God reigns supreme over all things. The permission of this invasion and subsequent judgment is not only an act of divine justice, but a strategy for the nations of the world to see and know the God of Israel. God uses Gog's disobedience as an opportunity to reveal himself in a powerful and unquestionable way. He not only defends his people, but also seeks the redemption of the nations through the revelation of his glory. God's promises regarding the restoration of Israel, as detailed in chapters 36 to 39 of Ezekiel, are an extraordinary testimony to divine faithfulness and his sovereign plan for the chosen people. These prophecies not only reveal the future of Israel, but also shed light on the crucial role that this nation will play in the last days. God, through the prophet Ezekiel, announces a remarkable transformation in Israel's condition. He promises to bring his people back to their land, restore their prosperity, and renew their spiritual heart. The desolate land will bloom again, and the people will be purified from their past impurities. God will not only restore the nation physically, but also spiritually, pouring out his spirit upon them. These promises of restoration are grounded in God's unwavering faithfulness to his promises made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Other biblical prophecies resonate with these prophecies, outlining Israel's specific role in the last days. The prophecies of Ezekiel intertwine with passages from other books, such as Zechariah and Revelation, revealing a broader picture of the divine plan. The vision of the dry bones in Ezekiel 37, for example, is closely related to God's promise, cited in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. The text reads, and I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy, so that when they look on me, on him whom they have pierced, 
they shall mourn for him, as one mourns for an only child, and weep bitterly over him, as one weeps over a firstborn. Both prophecies point to a spiritual awakening and a return to true faith. Furthermore, Ezekiel's promises about the annihilation of Gog have notable parallels with the apocalyptic narratives found in the book of Revelation, the final battle between the forces of evil and divine intervention to establish justice resonates in both prophetic traditions. When considering these prophecies together, we realize that God not only plans for the restoration of Israel, but also uses it as a catalyst for his glorious manifestation in the last days. The nation of Israel will play a central role in revealing God's power, justice and mercy to all nations. These promises not only indicate a restored future for Israel, but also point to the ultimate fulfillment of the divine plan in the course of human history. Altogether, the Bible describes 735 predictions about the future. Of these, 596 predictions have already been literally fulfilled, according to the scriptures, evidencing the authenticity and reliability of the content contained in the Bible. The impressive mark of 81% of all biblical prophecies already coming true is remarkable. Some of these prophecies were made centuries before the events, highlighting the remarkable accuracy of the scriptures. These prophecies, although addressing various themes, primarily provide teachings from Jesus. For Christians, the interpretation and response to these events should be grounded in faith and divine wisdom. While some may see these occurrences as signs of the end times and spiritually prepare for what is to come, others may understand differently and focus on seeking peace and reconciliation, following the example of Jesus Christ as the Prince of Peace. Regardless of individual interpretation, whether you believe this war is related to the end times, whether you believe Iran could be Gog or Magog, it is essential for Christians to commit to prayer, seeking truth, and loving action amidst the complexities of the current world. In facing geopolitical and spiritual challenges, the hope of Christians lies in the promise that God is in control and that his redeeming plan will be fulfilled even in the face of the darkest adversities. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and click on one of these two videos that will appear on your screen. I'm sure you'll love it. Hugs, and may God be with you.